Thank you for attending Kentucky Public Pensions Authority Service Purchase Webinar. My name is Jody Carson, and I am the manager for the Outreach and Trading Branch within the Division of Member Services. On the agenda for today's webinar, we'll have a review of the different service purchase types, how you can pay for purchases, and what a grandfathered service purchase is. We'll have a high-level overview of how purchasing service aids your retirement, and then we'll discuss the option of purchasing service at retirement. We have a lot of information to go over today, but we hope you find this information valuable. In order to purchase service, some conditions must be met. First, the service must be considered full-time by the statutory definition of full-time. For most employees, this means that the service must have averaged over 100 hours per month over a calendar or fiscal year. If the period in question was less than a year, the entire period has to average 100 hours per month. For school board employees, full-time means that the service must average 80 hours per month based on the number of actual days worked. The service in question cannot be attributed to another defined benefit retirement plan. This means if you have retirement service in another retirement system for that exact time frame, you have to take a refund of contributions and not be eligible for a benefit with any other plan. The member, and in some cases, the employer and retirement system must provide documentation to verify information such as status, retirement eligibility, and rates of pay. Lastly, all vested service purchase types require that you are active and participating with KPPA, and all but one purchase type require you to be vested. The exception is summer months, and that is a service type eligible for school board employees. For a Tier 1 member over the age of 65, vesting means the member must have 48 months of service. For Tier 1 and Tier 2 members under the age of 65, vesting means the member must have 60 months of service. Tier 3 members have no vesting requirements. On the screen, you will see a listing of our most common vested service purchase types for Tier 1 and Tier 2 members. As mentioned earlier, in order to purchase, the service has to be considered full-time. For a full list of all of our purchases, you can find that list available on our website at kyret.ky.gov. As we discussed earlier, there is typically documentation that is required to determine purchase eligibility. While this is not the complete list, these are the service types that are the most common. These forms can be accessed in member self-service or on our website under publications and forms, or you can contact our office to receive a particular form. Some of our purchases do not require a form, but you must submit documentation such as your DD-214 for active duty military service. Our most commonly used form is the Form 4225, Verification of Past Employment, which is used by many agencies to verify past or missing service. You can review more information about needed forms on our website. Our office often receives a lot of questions about a service purchase type called non-qualified service. Since the service has no tangible connection to previous work, it is often called airtime or ghost years. You are literally buying service out of the air. There are a lot of conditions that surround eligibility to purchase, and these were built into that purchase when it was first allowed to be purchased. First, the maximum amount that can be purchased is five years. It can be purchased in yearly increments, but no less than 12 months. The member must have a total of 180 months or 15 years in all retirement systems to be eligible, and at least 60 of those months must be with the systems in KPPA. Once purchased, the member must have 20 years outside of that purchase before the service is added to the member's account. The service must be purchased with pre-tax dollars, so you can't write a check to buy it. Last, and perhaps most importantly, only members with service with KPPA prior to August 1, 2002 are eligible to purchase. The service prior to August 1, 2002 can be worked or purchased, but it has to be credited to a KPPA system. 
There are six service purchase types for Tier 3 members. Since the retirement payment for Tier 3 members is not based on years of service, the purchase service is used to determine eligibility only. The main driver of the retirement payment amount is the account balance, so all of the Tier 3 types have service associated with contributions. We've already discussed the recontribution of a refund and omitted types. The other three are associated with military deployment while employed and participating. Military omitted, USERA, and decompression service. All of these service types will award months of service that are applied towards eligibility, and the money will be added to the account balance and accrue interest up to the retirement date. There are four different ways to pay for service with KPPA. The first type is a lump sum payment. This is another way of saying that you are using a check to pay for the service. Since this involves after-tax dollars, members are restricted in their ability to use this option. The law that governs this is IRC 415C, which is an IRS provision. The second means of purchasing service is via a rollover or transfer of funds from another qualified retirement plan, such as a 401k, 457, or traditional IRA. Since traditional plans are pre-tax accounts, the funds can be rolled over directly from one to another without any tax penalties and still be considered pre-tax dollars. To complete the rollover, the member and the other agency must complete a section of our Form 4170, which can be obtained when you receive the cost or by locating this form on our website. The third means of purchasing service is an Installment of Purchase Service Agreement, or in short, IPS. This allows active members to pay for service via payroll deductions over a period of up to five years. Your employer will send in extra money out of your check in addition to your regular monthly contributions. There are two types of IPS agreements, a pre-tax and after-tax IPS. The after-tax IPS is subject to the same IRC restrictions that are applied to lump sum payments, so it is possible that the before-tax IPS may be your only option. Now, a little more detail on the before-tax IPS. If you should choose to purchase service using a before-tax IPS, there will be a tax savings for you. This is because the contributions come out of your pay before taxes are applied, thereby lowering your taxable income. However, there are some drawbacks to the before-tax IPS as well. The most important one to note is that it is a binding and irrevocable contract. This means that once the contract is initiated, you cannot stop the contract and you cannot pay off the contract. The only conditions under which the contract can stop is if you terminate employment or if you pass away. If you terminate employment and subsequently resume employment with the same or another participating agency, the contract will resume. At the time of retirement, you have the option of paying off the remaining balance of the IPS by rolling over pre-tax funds from another account. The after-tax contract is much less restrictive, but your ability to utilize it is restrictive as well. We'll talk about that on the next slide. The after-tax contract is governed by IRC 415C, which means that you may not have the option of using it. Additionally, since the money comes to us after your income has been taxed, there is not a tax savings while you're employed. However, there will be a small tax savings when you retire. If you can run an after-tax contract and choose to do so, you can stop the contract or pay off the remaining balance at any time. Just notify our office and we'll stop it or allow you to pay it off. If you do choose to stop it and choose to purchase the remaining service later, it will be calculated using a new cost calculation date. One note to mention is that you cannot make extra payments. Only the set monthly amount can be paid unless you choose to pay it off in its entirety. I mentioned a few slides ago, you may have the option of paying off an IPS at the time of retirement by rolling over funds from another account. State employees who participate in the Kentucky Deferred Compensation Plans also have the opportunity to pay off an IPS or purchase service at the time of retirement using their deferred comp account. 
plus their payouts of annual time and compensatory time. This allows retiring members to roll their payouts of comp and annual to 401k or a 457 with deferred comp, then have those funds rolled back to KPPA. There are forms that need to be completed by the member and the reporting official at the time of retirement to notify KPPA of their intent to roll over the funds and purchase the service. A question that is often asked is what determines if something can be purchased with after-tax dollars? First, there are two service purchase types that can be purchased with after-tax money. These two purchase types are recontribution of a refund and an omitted service. There are types of purchases that statute defines as grandfathered or as non-grandfathered. A service purchase can be made with after-tax dollars if it is considered grandfathered, which means that the service purchase existed in statute prior to August 5th of 1997, and you have a participation date in the system you are purchasing the service prior to July 1st of 1999. Additionally, you have to still be participating in that system. The system could be CERS, KERS, or SPRS. It is possible that a service purchase may be grandfathered for one person and not another due to the different participation dates. The cost calculation date is used to determine the member's age, service, salary, and retirement eligibility that will be used in the cost. It is always the last day of the calendar month that the cost was requested. There are two different ways the cost calculation date is established. First is the submission of valid forms and or documentation. The other method is contacting KPPA if no forms are required or if you're requesting a recalculation of a previous cost. Once you receive the cost, you will have a period of time to arrange for payment. If KPPA receives no notice during that period, the cost will expire and a new cost calculation date will be established if you request the purchase again in the future. The formula for determining the cost is the number of years being purchased multiplied by the higher of your current rate of pay at the cost calculation date or the final compensation at the cost calculation date. The final compensation is the average of the highest or last salaries depending on tier and hazardous or non-hazardous service. This is then multiplied by an actuarial factor which is based on several factors such as your age, service, system, plan, and how purchasing the service will impact your retirement eligibility. Vested service can be purchased in either a lump sum or in increments of 12 months. Another common service purchase type is a recontribution or repurchase of refunded service. When members terminate employment and no longer participate in KPPA, they have the option to take their contributions out of KPPA, avoiding their retirement eligibility. If the member ever returns to employment and participation with KPPA, he or she can purchase back the service that was voided when taking the refund. The cost of the service is based on the original pre-tax amount that was refunded in addition to compounded interest that is derived between the original refund date and the cost calculation date. As the cost is based on interest, the overall cost of this purchase grows every month. Another service purchase type that may be purchased is called omitted service. Omitted service is service that the member should have received, but due to an oversight, it was not awarded or credited to the member. The cost to purchase omitted service compared to other types is typically modest. The cost is determined by multiplying the wages for the time that was not reported by the non-hazardous or hazardous contribution rate, typically 5 or 8%. Additionally, the employer who did not originally report the service has to pay the associated employer contributions for that period of service based on what the contribution rate was at that time. When a member purchases omitted service, the service and wages for that period are put in the member's account to look like it was there the whole time. If the member chooses not to purchase omitted service when first presented, he or she can buy it at a later date. Interest between the due date of the first cost and the cost calculation date of the new cost will be added to the cost. In order to be awarded the omitted service, both the employee and employer 
must pay the omitted contributions. Hazardous conversion is a service purchase type that impacts members whose job position is changed from non-hazardous to hazardous. When this happens, these members will have both non-hazardous and hazardous service. The member has the option to convert any of the non-hazardous earned in that same position to hazardous. The cost is determined by multiplying the member's non-hazardous basic benefit by an age factor in the years to convert. In order to fully explain how service purchases can impact your retirement, let's first review how your retirement benefits are calculated. For members in Tier 1 and Tier 2, the same formula is used. We use either three or four numbers to calculate the benefit. The member's final compensation is multiplied by a benefit factor, then multiplied by the member's years of service. It is this number that is typically changed by purchasing service. The fourth number is an early retirement factor used if the member retires before full retirement eligibility. Members who began participation prior to August 1st of 2004 can use any service purchases to retire earlier. For all other members, purchase service can be used to enhance benefits, but only in limited circumstances use purchases to retire earlier. The Tier 3 retirement calculation is different than that of Tier 1 and Tier 2, as the benefit is not based on the member's overall service. Service is used to determine eligibility, and purchase service can be used to make that eligibility earlier. However, the monthly payment is based on the member's accumulated account balance at retirement divided by an actuarial factor. Service purchases for Tier 3 members involve not only service, but also monies placed into the member's account. This amount, plus accumulated interest, will increase the account balance at retirement. So this leads to the question, how does purchasing service benefit me? For any member wishing to purchase service, the obvious answer is that it increases your monthly benefit, so the funds used to purchase service can be viewed as an investment. In our example, we see a member who is looking to retire with 27 years and is Tier 1. The calculation on the left shows the member retiring with 27 years with a benefit factor of 2.2% and a final compensation of $29,340. When we multiply these three numbers together, we arrive at the annual basic benefit of $17,427.96. If we divide that by 12, we arrive at the monthly basic benefit of $1,452.33. This can be compared to the same member who then saw an estimate for the same retirement date but with five more years of service due to a purchase. While the final compensation and benefit factors stay the same, the service is now 32 years. If we take 32 years multiplied by the 2.2%, multiplied by the $29,340, gives us an annual basic benefit of $20,755.36, or a $1,721.28 monthly benefit. The monthly benefit increased by $268.95, which will continue for the remainder of the member's life. Many members want to proceed with retirement as soon as possible and will not be looking at a service purchase as an investment, but instead as an avenue to buy their way out early. If your participation date is prior to August 1, 2004, you have the ability to use service purchases to retire early. For example, if you have a participation date prior to August 1, 2004, you can work 22 years, purchase five, and retire using 27 years for both eligibility and determining the benefit. With 22 years alone, the member would have to be at least age 55 years old to retire and then retire with an early retirement penalty. For Tier 1 members who started on or after August 1st of 2004, as well as all Tier 2 members, they cannot use a service purchase to establish eligibility. The member has to have at least 25 years or be age 55 before service purchase can be used. 
It will then be used to determine if there is any early retirement penalty as well as to calculate the monthly benefits. Please bear in mind that this refers to vested service purchases only. Refunds, omitted, and hazardous conversion will go toward retirement eligibility regardless of the participation date. On your screen, you will see an example of how a purchase can impact a Tier 3 member's payment. On the left, the member retired with an account balance of $277,787.44 and is age 57. When we divide the account balance by the age 57 factor, the monthly payment is $1,585.86. The member had the opportunity to purchase a refund and did so. Over time, the interest added onto that service purchase increased the account balance at retirement to $322,258.55. When this amount is divided by the age 57 factor, the monthly payment is $1,839.76. This increased the monthly payment by $253.90. The fastest and easiest method of obtaining a cost is via member self-service. If you do not know what the cost to purchase service will be, self-service will give you a cost estimate using real-time information. It may be that once you see the cost, you may not want to pursue it further. If you have received a cost from KPPA in the past and you want to receive a recalculated cost, you can initiate the paperwork in MSS and receive it much more quickly. To register for or to visit member self-service, go to myretirement.ky.gov. Our legal notice concludes the service purchase webinar. This presentation, of course, is intended for general information reference only. So if you do have specific questions regarding your account, please contact us at 1-800-928-4646. Thank you and have a great day.